this is important. Since 9-11, Marine Corps has changed dramatically the way we employ our forces. We're, we're burning 200,000 gallons of JP every day in Afghanistan today for 20,000 Marines. That's a lot of fuel. In the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, we have distributed our force over an ever-expanding battlefield. Today, Marine companies can cover over 100 square miles, a battle space that required a division of Marines only 10 years ago. This is possible because of the powerful command and control capabilities in the hands of today's Marine companies, platoons, and squads. Over the last decade of war, we have become more lethal to defeat a new enemy. But these powerful capabilities come at a cost. Our unprecedented demand for fuel and water tethers Marines to vulnerable logistic tails. It limits our ability to maneuver and ultimately puts Marines at risk. The numbers reveal an unsustainable cost. In 2001, a Marine company hauled 122 pounds of batteries. Today, it is 586 pounds. In one month, an infantry battalion uses about 6,000 pounds of non-rechargeable batteries. Before 9-11, a Marine infantry battalion had 64 Humvees. Today, it has 173 MRAPs and MATVs, adapting to the threat of IEDs. We armored our vehicles. They are more survivable, but are 75% heavier. The fuel efficiency of our tactical vehicles has dropped 30%. Today, we ship more than 100,000 bottles of water a day. Fuel and water amount to more than 70% of our logistics burden. And the highest cost? A 2010 study showed one Marine is killed or wounded for every 50 fuel and water convoys. We win battles because we are fast, because we are lethal, and because we are austere. To retain our lethal edge, the Commandant has called on us to change the way we use energy. Imagine a Marine Corps in 2025 that delivers the same lethality to austere environments but only requires half the fuel it does today. We will deploy Marine Expeditionary Forces that maneuver from the sea and sustain our C4I and life support systems in place. The only liquid fuel needed will be for mobility systems, which will be more energy efficient than today. Rebalancing our core will require no less than institutional change. We must procure more efficient equipment and upgrade our legacy equipment. We must increase our use of renewable energy. And we must change the way we think about energy. That's where we start, with our Marine Corps ethos. From our NCOs to our GOs, we must be aware and accountable for our energy use. It is about training Marines, modern-day Spartans, to understand that a resource-efficient Marine is a more combat-effective Marine. From the first day of recruit training, Marines will know what resource efficiency means for the mission. A lighter, faster, more maneuverable force, operating over greater distances, longer, in austere environments, with reduced risk from a lighter logistics footprint. Bottom line, there will be more Marines in the fight and fewer hauling fuel and water. We must increase our use of renewable energy. In 2025, all C4I systems and sustainment will be powered not by JP8 generators, but by renewable and alternative energy, energy being harvested in place. One Marine company at the tip of the spear in San Gin recently showed us it can be done. As far as um, having stuff on the FOB with the green systems, with the right amount of panels, that stuff will power everything that we need, which will then, the generator I have outside takes about 25 gallons a day, uh, you know, on average. Um, that's 25 gallons a day I don't have to have replenished, so you figure that's, you know, X amount of gallons a week per month, and that's how many convoys have to get brought out here to resupply some fuel. So they just got talking about the IED threat, having guys on the road bringing fuel, I wouldn't want to be the guy driving a fuel truck in an IED environment either. This technology is scalable from a battalion to a MEF. Combining hybrid and renewable power, 
With efficient equipment and shelters, we can support our largest MAGTAFs. We can also reduce the burden of batteries. We brought this uh, system called Spaces with us. It's uh, solar panels that pack into our packs and uh, they recharge batteries for us. Being on platoon commander, if I do not have a radio, I'm lost. I have to be able to talk to my boss and tell him everything that's going on all the time. So generally speaking, on an op where we're going to be out for two, three weeks, I'll carry enough batteries with us for three, four days, which is a lot of weight for one, and it takes up space where I can't put stuff like ammo. At the tactical edge, water is the greatest burden. We can produce water from local sources and cool it in solar-powered refrigerators. There is potential to harvest water from the air or even our vehicles. Marines on the move will also produce their own source of energy, collecting solar, kinetic, and thermal power from their gear and body, and distributing to their radios, night vision equipment, and sensors. In future contingencies, the more than 1,000 fuel generators on the battlefield today will be relics of war's past. Efficiency is about demanding better performance with less energy from our equipment. Our vehicles today are mobile ISR platforms and command centers. At a halt, we run the prime mover to power internal and offboard systems increasing fuel demand. In the future, we will harvest kinetic, solar, and thermal power on the move and store it in next generation batteries to increase fuel efficiency and power our equipment. With lightweight armor, composite materials, and exportable power, we can transform our tactical vehicles into hybrid energy systems without compromising force protection or combat capability. Aircraft engines can also be more efficient. We are driving industry to design more aerodynamic systems built from lighter materials and reducing drag. On the ground, 60% of our fuel is used to cool and heat our equipment and our Marines. We can design our expeditionary COCs and housing shelters to be more efficient and reduce the demand for air conditioning. LED lighting, for example, puts off less heat and draws less electricity. Temperature-independent electronics can reduce the energy footprint of our operations centers. As America's expeditionary force in readiness, we need to change the way we think about energy to retain our lethality. By 2025, we will dramatically cut our fuel consumption on the battlefield. We can achieve that goal by using more renewable energy, procuring more efficient equipment, and reaffirming our expeditionary mindset. We need to begin to wean ourselves off of fossil-based fuel. We need to not only do that, we need to be able to lighten our load. This is about us. This is about what's best for the Marine Corps.